Hi everyone, welcome back. And in this video, let's see how we can segment grains in an image using less than 10 lines of code. And of course, I'm going to use exactly the same library I talked about in the last couple of videos, which is Pi plus Paranto. It's an amazing library. It uh, boils this down into a single line. That's it. So let's jump into the code. And in case you haven't watched my uh, previous two videos, I feel sorry for you. You missed out on amazing content, but luckily you can find it on YouTube and you will not miss it if you hit the subscribe button right now. Okay, so the library I'm talking about is Pike Lesperanto. Go ahead and Google search for it. I'll share code with all of my videos. I always share my code. Go find my GitHub page. Uh, the link is down below in the description. And I always try to include all types of uh, any reference that I have as part of this video. I'm going to include both in the code and as part of the description down uh, below. So you'll find the link to this page. And also one note here, the way to install this is pretty straightforward as long as you follow the, the instructions right here. So first conda install your PyOpenCL and then go ahead and do the pip installation of this library. Now you have the power to segment anything using a single line, that's it. How do we do that? Let's jump into our code. And first thing first, let us go ahead and count it. This will be 10 or nine lines of code. And when I run this, you will see everything segmented right away. There you go. That's, you saw my input image and this is a segmented result. Now let's dig a bit deeper. How did I get this? Let's remove every variable here and every image and start with a clean slate. And I'm using Python 3.7 in case you wonder. 3.7.11 is the version that I'm using. Okay, so how does this actually work? So first thing, let's import our library, scikit-image, matplotlib, numpy, and I'm going to import my uh, image that I literally downloaded from Google search. That's it. Uh, I was just looking for something that has grains. That's what I'm using and I'm converting that into 8-bit image because the one that I downloaded was, I don't know what it was. I am reading it as gray and converting to 8-bit, uh, uh, that's all. So you'll see that I have an array of unsigned integer 8 uh, and this is my image size. And now let us uh, invert the image because if you look at it, if you look at this image, it's a bright image with dark background. We want to segment the, the grains, meaning I'm using, think of this as membranes. I would like to segment the membranes or the boundaries, the grain boundaries that are connecting these grains. So I am inverting this and let's have a quick look at how it looks like right there. So now it's easy. All I'm trying to do is segment these and the areas within within this segment the individual grains. So how do we do that? In PyClassPyranto, let's go ahead and load that library first and let's define that we are working on a, a GPU. So the way you do that is select device. If you if not, you don't have to do that. It'll use CPU. And I am defining my input image. I'm pushing that into PyClassPyranto right there. Yeah, so it can benefit from this GPU. Uh, you can skip these steps if uh, uh, if you don't have a GPU. Directly start with an input image and jump to, okay, uh, step, step number one. Let's threshold this image. Let's binarize it using Orsu. Okay, so within class parameter, there is binary not. So let's do that and let's show that so you can see exactly what I'm talking about. So I binarize this image. Yeah, and then you have this binary and then I'm doing the binary not. So you have an image right there clearly showing your grains right here. Okay, and now let's go ahead and do our Voronoi labeling. What does Voronoi do? It actually finds the centers of each of this grain and uh, uses that as a seed and divides your areas into different Voronoi regions. If you have no clue what I'm talking about, you definitely missed the last couple of videos. So go back to video number 273, 74, 275, so you are up to speed in terms of what I'm talking about here. Okay, so uh, let's go ahead and uh, apply our labels, uh, or generate our labels right there using Voronoi labeling, and now just visualize it. 
right here. This is exactly what we did with the nine lines of code up there. I just wanted to take time to explain things a little bit. Okay, so we have our image, we uh, thresholded it and we inverted it and this is the image right there and we provided this as an input to our uh, uh, to our Voronoi labeling and it did an amazing job in labeling. Now you can uh, do a few other things which I'm going to show you right now. You can exclude your uh, edges, edge touching uh, grains which is what I do for my uh, grain size analysis. And here is your uh, all your grains by removing the ones that are touching the edges. And now we are ready for analysis. I am also adding this line of code for you. This is basically exactly same as what I just showed you, except here you can just uh, add a little bit of uh, dilations and erosion of your uh, grain boundaries and so on in case you need to do that type of operation. I just wanted to show you how you can do that as part of Pike Lesperanto, like binary dilation and so on. So that's why I'm, I'm, I'm leaving that right here. Okay, uh, we have a image that looks like this, a labeled image that looks like this. Now we need to just get uh, statistics out of it. First of all, how many objects do we have? Like is it 200, 300, how many do we have? So for that, let's go ahead and we use this a couple of times in the last couple of videos, maximum of all pixels. What is the What does that even mean, maximum of all pixels? It's actually giving me the maximum value of all the pixels that we have. How does it tell me how many objects do we have? This is a labeled image. Every object gets a unique ID. The first object gets an ID of one, the second one, two, three, four. So by looking at the maximum of all the pixels, I know exactly how many objects do we have. That's exactly what we are trying to do right there. And we have 285 total objects. Okay, now if you want to save this to the disk, you can go ahead and do that. Uh, but uh, let us pull this. To be able to save it, you need to pull. We pushed it into Clasperanto, now we are pulling it. So let's go ahead and label the array. When you pull it, it's a NumPy array. Now it's not an object anymore. Now I can do whatever with that array. For example, I can show it using uh, uh, plt.imshow and there you go. That's my labeled image. And why does it look weird in case you're not used to looking at something like this? I just mentioned to you that each object is given a unique value. So the first one has a value of one. So in this image, it looks dark. And the last one has a value of 285. That's why it looks too bright. Yeah, that's why the intensity looks like it's going from left to right, increasing intensity. Okay, now I can go ahead and save this image. That's it, uh, locally. And uh, another note I would like to add, this image is a uh, unsigned integer 32. If I go back to my labeled array, you see that this is unsigned integer 32. Why? Because if it's unsigned integer eight, the maximum value is 255. But in this case, we have 285 objects. We don't want all the objects above 255 to be given a value 255. This is exactly why we have unsigned integer 32. So the maximum number of objects in a field can be two to the power 32. And uh, when it comes to statistics, Clasperanto, that's statistics of labeled pixels. Go ahead and give your input image. Go ahead and give you give the labeled image, and it's going to pull all the statistics out of this. Why do you need input image? Well, if you want intensity values within each grain, then you need input image. That's exactly why we are supplying that. Yeah, so let's go ahead and get our statistics. And the statistics is, uh, if you see, this is going to be a dictionary of many, many things. It's actually reporting 37 different things right there and I am more comfortable working with uh, pandas, so I'm going to convert that into a pandas data frame, and here is all the attributes that are exported, bounding box and uh, mean intensities and uh, mass center and so on, many, many other uh, parameters right here. Once you have them, it's pretty straightforward. You just go ahead and use Seaborn or PyPlot to plot your data right there, that's area, I'm going to plot mean intensity and uh, you can do uh, built-in plotting from Clasperanto, like for example, pixel count map right there. It shows you that, okay, this is the largest uh, grain. Pixel count is how many pixels in an object. And these are all very small grains right there. 
and many, many other, go ahead and look at the documentation. They've done an amazing job in giving you various examples. So I'm pretty sure you'll learn a lot by going through their documentation. Okay, guys, thank you very much. And in the next video, let's actually look at 3D segmentation and uh, explore the strength of this PyCl Esperanto library. Thank you very much.